Lucio. Welcome to Short Story Sketches, where you watch a time-lapse painting of a background that I worked on while I narrate some Reddit stories, typically from the r slash am I the asshole subreddit. I actually listen to Reddit stories while I paint, so I just kind of came up with this idea that, you know, we could just paint together and listen to stories together, and um, I don't know, we could talk about it down in the comments or something, because a lot of these are, are pretty interesting. I also listen to true crime, uh, but I just felt like there were a lot of true crime YouTube channels out there and it would be kind of hard to like do a speed painting and I think talk about a true crime case. Um, I don't know, maybe it wouldn't. I don't know, maybe that's an idea. We'll figure it out one day, but today's Reddit, so <laughs> let's go ahead and get into it. Our first story is by Popular Valuable 243 and they say, Am I the asshole for telling my sister that she shouldn't overvalue herself and prepare for the worst? Throwaway account. I, 24 female, have an older sister, Eve, 29 female, who had her first child, Lori, 1 female. And while this should be a time of joy and excitement, there's actually a lot of tension and brewing resentment between her, our mom, and her husband, Jack. 29 male. Despite it being unplanned, Eve's pregnancy was wanted and Jack was an involved partner. He went to most of Eve's appointments, took the birthing classes, and supported Eve's decision to just have our mom in the room while he waited outside when she gave birth. The plan was for our mom to be by Eve's side in the room and to help her by staying for a week after Lori was born. Everyone was cool with this, but unfortunately our aunt got into some drama with her husband in another state and our mom rushed over for her to be at her sister's side. Eve was already in her third trimester, so Jack didn't like the idea of our mom going and voiced it. Our mom tore Jack a new one, and Eve even got on his case about it, so he apologized. However, Eve ended up going into labor, and Jack ultimately was the one in the room while our mom was away. When she called, our mom expressed being sad over the fact that she wasn't there for the birth of her first grandchild, and she and Eve decided that no one else in the family would see Lori until she got back, without discussing it with Jack. He was understandably not happy as his mom lived about 45 minutes away and was looking forward to meeting Lori too as she was the first grandchild on both sides. Eve pulled the I just gave birth card and Jack reluctantly allowed it. On the day that our mom was supposed to come back, she missed her flight and couldn't get a new one until the following morning. Our mom could have just rented a car, but she didn't want to spend the money since the airline wouldn't refund the money. Jack brought up allowing his mom to come again, but Eve refused, citing that he had already agreed. Unfortunately, Jack's mom was in a car accident and passed before ever getting to meet Lori, since Eve wouldn't even allow a video chat. Jack was distraught. He moved into the guest room, went to the funeral alone, and refuses to engage with Eve at all. Jack's side of the family keeps calling and messaging Eve to tell her what a selfish and awful person she is, and Jack refuses to defend. Eventually, Eve got sick of it and packed up and left to our mom's house to teach Jack a lesson. But he hasn't texted or called. Our mom thinks that he just needs some space and that he'll call soon, but I just laughed at that. I didn't mean to, though. My mom and Eve asked me why I laughed, and I tried to brush it off or even leave, but they couldn't let me and pressed for an answer. Eventually, I told her that while the accident wasn't her fault, she did keep Lori away from Jack's mom, meeting her for a week, and now she never will. There's no way Jack is going to ever love you enough to forgive that, and you should prepare for the worst. Eve started to bawl her eyes out while mom berated me, so I left. Am I the asshole? Edit, just to clarify, because I keep seeing this when the accident first happened, Eve has apologized three separate times, Jack has admitted to this, and Eve intended to go to the funeral with him, but he drove off without her. Jack does interact with Lori, but it's Eve that he's icing out, and my niece is the only thing he's willing to talk to Eve about. Jack had been living in the guest room for five months before Eve left. She's offered to go to couples counseling, but Jack has refused. We're going to go ahead and get into the comments here. Fantastic Mangoes 7440 says, probably would get downvoted, but who cares? Not the asshole. Your mom showed time and time again that her first granddaughter isn't that important to her. The fact that Jack's mom will never get to meet her granddaughter 
is something that Jack would never get over, and he's right. His mom was denied access because the other grandmother would rather cater to her adult sister than meet her granddaughter. That woman died with the wish to see her first granddaughter. Jack and the rest of the family are never going to forgive your sister for this. Hopefully they won't take it out on the baby, though. Flotis said, not the asshole. The fact that she's not even remorseful or there for her husband when his mom died shows exactly what her priorities are. What a stupid, petty thing to force him to wait, and even pettier to walk out on him like he did something wrong. Jesus, how heartless. Yeah, I'd be stunned if he came back. I know I wouldn't. OP responded to this comment and said, to be fair, she did apologize. Jack didn't respond and was getting ready to go to the funeral, but Jack drove off without her. Sabora Hoku says, not the asshole. It seems like this is pretty cut and dry. Eve put her and her mom's opinion first and Jack lost something he'll never get back. Why isn't Eve trying to win Jack back? Has Eve even admitted that she could have let Jack's mom meet her grandchild without hurting anyone? And overall, the comments are overwhelmingly not the asshole. But we're going to go ahead and get on to the update because OP actually posted two updates, but the first one got deleted. Uh, it looks like it didn't make it very far, but it was several weeks before this second update. So I believe we're kind of missing an update in between here, but we're going to go ahead and read this last one. It says, hey. It's been a couple of weeks and due to people still occasionally asking, I thought I'd give some people quick updates to the situation. Here are the basic bullet points. My sister has now officially been diagnosed with postpartum depression and that's the trump card slash Hail Mary of the situation. My sister and her husband are living together again and in couples therapy. My sister is in individual counseling. My niece has now been officially introduced to a few members of her paternal side and they all love her. Jack's family has ceased their negative comments about my sister, but she says that they're still pretty formal and distant towards her. I honestly don't know if she'll ever be in their good graces again and will only put up with her for my brother-in-law and niece's sake. My niece's first and middle name is going to be legally changed to whatever Jack wants. Oh, that's new. For the next five years, Brother-in-law's side of the family is getting priority when it comes to any and all holidays. My mother will be on a strict info diet when it comes to the baby. No pictures unless Jack approves. This is all I know for right now, and my mom is not happy with any of this and is calling Jack a controlling asshole, but my sister is holding firm in an effort to save her marriage. She claims that brother-in-law and her are making progress in counseling, and I hope for her sake that it's true. It's gonna suck not being able to see my niece as much as I wanted for the next possible few years, but compared to never being able to see her at all like Jack's mom, it is what it is. I know a lot of you may not be happy with this update, but it is what it is for now. And that was the last update I could find from OP. Um, but you could kind of see what I mean by I think we missed a little bit of an in-between update. There seems to be a bit of a jump. Like I'm not sure what the first and middle name being legally changed to what Jack wants has to do with like the original situation as well as why OP's mom is on an info diet now about the baby and not allowed to see her. I feel like maybe some more developments happen that we're just not aware of. But um, we'll go ahead and kick it off with some of the comments down here. Cat61850 says, I'm actually kind of happy with this update. His family will forever hold this against her, and she probably will never be completely in their good graces again. This is all she can hope for, to be honest. Also, your mother doesn't get to be unhappy. She put everyone before meeting the baby, causing Jack's mother to never meet her grandchild. A lot of comments underneath that one is just agreeing, saying that they're not sure if they would have been able to forgive Eve for doing something like this and that Jack has a big heart for being able to even try to work on this marriage. There is a little bit of a comment talking about the name. Uh, Crocodile Zebra Milk says, did Jack not have a say in his own daughter's name? OP responds and says, from my understanding, Eve picked the first and provided a list of middle names that Jack could choose from. And then my niece got Jack's surname. Shira Mom for comments, I don't know how I feel about this. Changing the baby's name after a year to whatever the husband wants? 
priority for holidays for five years? No pictures for your mom unless Jack approves of it? This seems like jumping from the frying pan directly into the fire. If these are the terms set up by Jack in order to save the marriage, one, I doubt the marriage counselor knows about these specific ones I mentioned, and two, is it even worth saving? Your sister has no autonomy over their child, no autonomy over her schedule, no ability to share a photo with her mother. You have limited contact with your niece. Who really won here other than Jack and his family who might someday be nice to your sister? Yes, your sister was wrong in the original post. Of course she was. But not one thing on this list can change what happened. Not one. And this part of the list sounds like they could lead to some DV situations in the future on Jack's part. Isolation from support systems is one of those factors. Uh, and DV, just for reference, usually indicates domestic violence. Just in case you weren't aware. Man in Mopo says, you mean the sister has to go through what Jack went through so she can get an ounce of understanding of what he felt when she was controlling? Let's see. One, Jack did not get to name the baby in the first place of either the first or middle name, meaning she was in control. Two, Jack's mom didn't even get pictures because OP sister was in control and didn't approve it, meaning his mom died without her knowing what her granddaughter even looks like. At least the sister's mom knows what the baby looks like. Three, Jack's family are barely getting to meet the child one year after she was born. Five years of holidays does not make up for missing the newborn year. LOL, but of course this is Reddit, so some of you think that Jack is the controlling one. A few comments replied to that one, uh, with a little bit of backlash, but then also a little bit of agreement. Seemed to be kind of a 50-50 split on there. And I think that's it for this story. I have to say, I feel really bad for Lori, the one-year-old, the little girl. Hopefully this isn't going to affect her life long term. Hopefully her parents can figure out this mess while she's still young enough to maybe not be as impressionable to what's going on. And yeah, I hope everything ends up turning out okay. Let's go ahead and get on to the next story. For this next story, we're going to be reading from an Am I the Asshole post. But uh, Opie actually had ended up posting a few days prior to this one about a similar situation that involves the same people, but um, it was a different story. So it technically isn't a part of what we're about to read, but I just kind of feel like it's important to read that too so we could kind of have even more information and background and understand the dynamic between OP and their mom. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the first post that they, that they posted in this. And it says, am I the asshole for not inviting my mom to my birthday party? My mom got pregnant with me by accident when they were in school. And this caused a lot of problems for both of my parents because they had to continue school while taking care of me. And shortly after I was born, my mom just moved all of a sudden and my dad had to look after me all alone. Around last year, my mom, 31 female, suddenly reached out to me, 14 female, and my dad, 31 male, and she asked if she could meet me. So I started seeing my mom every month and met my grandparents and they were all very nice to me. My dad kind of hates my mom, but he doesn't like to say it and it's obvious that he never wants to be near her and is reluctant every time I go meet her. I learned that it's because my mom was a drunk when they were younger and was a really bad person, but I think she's changed now. In a while, I will turn 15 and I'm going to have a small party to celebrate and I'm only having my granny, my dad's mom, and my best friends over. My mom found out it was my birthday soon and called my dad to ask what we'll be doing and he told her that she didn't need to come. My mom was mad and her parents called me and my dad trying to convince us. So my dad asked me if I wanted her there and I honestly don't think we're close, so I said no. Now my mom's really hurt and she doesn't want to meet me anymore because she says she needs time away from us. When I called her, her, only her parents pick up and they tell me to leave her alone. I feel bad because I think she's really hurt and I don't know if I should have just sucked it up and just let her go to my party. My dad says good riddance, but I'm afraid that I'm actually in the wrong, but I don't know it. Am I the asshole? Before we get into the comments, I think I'm going to go ahead and interject on this one. No, you are not. You're absolutely not. In a parent-child relationship, it is up to the parent to reach out to the child, to regulate their own emotions, and that's not what your mom is doing right now. 
it, it almost kind of feels like this is a little bit of like a mind game or a manipulation and while I'm sure your mom has some good qualities about her, it's obvious that she still has a lot of things that she needs to work on and figure out. I'm sure she did have her feelings hurt, but that's not something that she should have laid on you. Jeepers Creepers 74 says, not the asshole. You are the child, your mom is the adult. It is not your job to make your mom feel good about herself or where she stands with you. It's her job to repair this relationship, look out for your feelings, and give you space when it's needed. If she's not willing to assume these responsibilities, then she's not ready to be back in your life. That's on her, not you, and you should not feel guilty about it. As for your grandparents, they're fostering this bad behavior on your mom's part by treating the two of you like school friends who should be forced to invite each other to parties so nobody's feelings get hurt rather than a parent and child. They're unwilling to hold her accountable for the harm that she's caused and therefore their opinion is meaningless as well. Despite these unfortunate circumstances, it sounds like you have a lot of people who do love you in your life. Happy birthday and enjoy your party. At Heaviv says, my mom found out it was my birthday soon. I love this. Like, she doesn't know when she gave birth to you. By the way, after 14 years, she should be grateful for breadcrumbs if she gets them. Not the asshole. You know, and that's funny. I actually thought the exact same thing. I read that and I was just kind of like, I mean, like, don't you remember the day you gave birth? Come on. <laughs> Extinct Diplodocus says, not the asshole. She may be your mom, but she hasn't seen you for over a decade. You're still slowly getting to know her. Things may eventually gel with you two, or they may not. At this point, she's a near stranger. It's totally reasonable to limit your birthday attendance to those you're close to. Your mom does not, yet if ever, fit that definition. Your mom seems to feel that you should recognize her as your mom as if the decade of absence never happened. That's unwarranted, and if she's disappointed about it, it's her own unrealistic expectations at fault. No kidding, 1305 says, not the asshole. You're 14. You should never be put on the spot like this. Your mom sucks. She abandoned you and your dad for years, and while I applaud her for at least attempting to start working on fixing things, she's an idiot if she expected it to be easy. She's now realizing it's not, and what's her first instinct? To run away again. We're going to go ahead and move on to the primary Am I the Asshole post, which is, Am I the Asshole for refusing to meet my mom after my grandparents said me and my dad weren't a real family. So this is the same OP from the last story we just read. My parents had me really young, like 16, and my mom moved away after I was born, so my dad took care of me alone while I was in school. I, 14 female, started meeting my mom, 31 female, last year when she came back all of a sudden and we meet every month. My dad, 31 male, doesn't like my mom and wouldn't talk to her if he could. Recently, my mom and I got into a fight because I didn't want her to attend my birthday party because we aren't close. So to smooth things over, my grandparents proposed that we all have a family dinner together to celebrate separately. So my dad and I had dinner with them yesterday and it was a disaster. At first it was fine, but my dad was really uncomfortable and it was just awkward all around. Then my grandparents started talking about my mom's involvement in my life. Like, maybe you and your mom can go somewhere together, that kind of thing. My mom suggested that she could send me to school in the mornings, which my dad does. I could tell my dad was getting annoyed and he said it's fine and she didn't need to do that. Then my grandparents started to get angry and asked why he was so against them while my mom just looked embarrassed and didn't say anything. Then my grandma said she needs her mother to have a real family. Just her dad isn't enough. My dad got so mad. He just told me to pack up and we were going. And when we got home, my dad just locked himself in his room and I could hear him crying. At that point, I was just angry, so I called my mom and told her I didn't want to see her ever again. She started crying and tried to apologize, but I hung up on her. She sent me voicemails saying that I shouldn't punish her for what her parents said and that I need to stop overreacting. I don't know if I'm being too extreme and overreacting. My dad says I can decide, but he looks conflicted, honestly. And my mom crying made me feel kind of bad. So am I the asshole? I don't know if it's justified to stop seeing my mom even though she didn't say the stuff, just her parents. Okay Conversation says, then my grandma said she needs her mother to have a real family, just her dad's not enough. That's rich, considering it was your real mom that abandoned you. 
Tell grandma that dad has been plenty family and he's the one who actually raised and cared for you for 14 years, not the asshole. Grandma can just go away. I would suggest leaving the door open for your mom so long as she understands that grandma is now on the no contact list and that's non-negotiable. Fit or Fat 1999 says, saying don't punish me for what my parents said is one thing, saying you're overreacting to what your grandparents said is crossing the line. I'd say not the asshole and when you've cooled off you may change your mind about seeing your mom. But in my opinion, your mom and grandparents are pushing way too hard too soon. It's probably the make up for lost time mindset, but you're 14 now, not the infant she abandoned. You can develop a relationship, but it should be on your terms. One non-negotiable should be don't ever criticize my dad or say he and I aren't a real family. Beck 2010 says, not the asshole. For 13-ish, where's your mom been? Not with you. Who held you when you cried? Who was there for you to celebrate your achievements? Who took care of you when you were sick? Not your bio mom. Your dad's been there for you. Your bio mom showing up and sowing seeds of discontent is disrespectful. Your grandparents, aka your bio mom's parents, are happy to throw your dad away now that their child has decided to be a parent. Your bio mom had the opportunity to tell her parents to back down when they said your dad isn't enough, but she stayed quiet. How very mature and classy of her. Now, go hug your dad, tell him you love him, and let him know that you know he's enough and then some. Slow down on meeting your bio mom for the time being, and has she ever told you why she abandoned you? OP responded to that comment and said, I'm not sure why my mom moved, but my grandparents were unhappy that she got pregnant, so I've just always assumed that it was to get away. Though, I don't know if my mom made the decision, so I don't know if she decided to leave or she just followed her parents. We're gonna go ahead and get on to the update for this post, which came about 16 days later and says, here's an update to what happened after I made my post. The post is on my profile. After I cooled down from that day, I thought it over and I read all of your comments. So I decided to keep talking to my mom and maybe not my grandparents anymore. Then I talked to my dad about it and he told me that when my mom and dad were dating, her parents disapproved of him because he was poorer and his mom was a single mom. My mom's family is kind of classist and they didn't like him, so during that time they treated him badly. So that's why he doesn't like my mom's parents and he still hates my mom for never making contact. He called my mom and told her that she could continue seeing me once a month, but I wouldn't meet her parents at all and she wouldn't fetch me to school. My mom said okay and now everything's blown over. She apologized to my dad and me and now he's trying to tolerate her more. I'm trying to be less mad at my mom because I think she's trying harder. And I'm trying to show my dad that I appreciate him more for all that he's done for me. Thank you for all your advice on what to do. Some of you seem curious to know what would happen, so here you go. Sorry if I'm updating wrong, I'm not really clear of the format. Spin Pins responded and said, You seem incredibly mature for your age. It seems like your dad's been raising you right. Good for you for showing him the appreciation he deserves and for icing out the grandparents. They sound toxic and won't contribute any good to your life. Your mom seems highly influenced by them, but doesn't seem to have the same mindset. I hope things work out with her, but I'd be cautious. Good luck to you and your real family. And all of the comments after this one were saying virtually the same thing, just complimenting OP on how mature they are about the situation and wishing the best for them. And OP, if you're listening to this, I hope everything has turned out swimmingly for you. I hope that you and your mom are able to build a relationship, whether it be a casual or a deeper relationship is up to you, but it sounds like you have a really awesome dad and I wish you nothing but the best. Thanks for watching and hanging out with me while we draw together. Uh, I ended up doing this as a study just to kind of get the creative juices flowing again. I had tried to start another painting and I just kind of got stuck on it you know you there are times where like you know exactly what to do and, and how to solve the problems that you're seeing in your art and there are other times where you're just kind of lost <laughs> and I was lost so I ended up taking a break from that particular painting and instead painted this it was nice to be able to just kind of look at a reference and paint and not have to get super creative or think 
really in depth about how am I gonna make this waterfall look that I've never seen before, you know? Uh, another update that I've mentioned, I think in the description of one of my previous videos, but not like on an actual video before. Uh, so I was accepted into the Women in Animation mentorship and it has been a lot of fun trying to do different types of background paintings and like actually get to meet people who went to school for this and you know some even work in the industry already and it's just been a real pleasure to get to meet everyone and learn from everybody it's kind of funny because i feel like because i didn't go to art school i don't know i feel a little bit of imposter syndrome you know like, eh, do I belong here? <laughs> it's complicated. You know, our relationship with art is complicated. But um, I am grateful for it. I do know that. I'm very grateful for it. Wado for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to my video, my stories. Oh, well, they're not my stories. But, you know, viewing my art, stuff like that. Uh, and I hope you enjoy your next video. Bye!